Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. Previously, we got to know everybody, where we found out that everyone's just a walking anime stereotype. So here's the second poem we gotta do, and I guess we'll make this a Natsuki poem. So, Lollipop. Anime. Ribbon. Hawaii. Like, how's this different word and cute on this? Empty is probably like her, knowing how she works. Shiny. Let's see. Sunset could be either of those two. Ring Cloud. Hers. Memories? Fireworks. Her also. Fantasy. Swimsuit. Jump. There she is jumping. Laugh. Her, because she's getting key deaths. Pink. Whoops, accidentally clicked too fast. Puppy. Sparkle. Nope. Can be. Sweet. Really? Giggle. Skirt. I think we pretty much have sunk it for her. Mouse. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple of days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Manly. Hi. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're all in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I'm not here for you. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Eh, it's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Wait, what? Eh? Why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just want to look at it. Ah. Uh -huh. Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. Bully the Sayori. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have brought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves you one option. Uh, I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Ah, uh, I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri. To Manly, let me borrow some money. You're not gonna borrow it, you're just gonna take it. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Ah, uh, did I just... Be assertive? I, I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my book. Ah. Uh. <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad and now I have to accept the revolution. The revolution? Retribution. That. Still, coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? May or may not be literal. Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But... You wouldn't have come if we weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. I do love free food, though. Pwap. Kia! Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. 
Ow. What was... Natsuki? Yeah? A cookie. Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. I is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. I was about to say that. Yeah, it's Natsuki. I was just gonna give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> That's Natsuki's character. She bought her the food! But she couldn't just give her the food, she had to throw the food at her. Natsuki! That's so nice of you! I'm so happy! Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good! Sayori so suddenly clasped her hand over her mouth. I bit my tongue. You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, your looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah. What do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Ah, oh, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie's still in the hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Arm. Sayori suddenly leads down and takes a bite off Natsuki's- Oh, that's the plan. Hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you call- can you tell Sayori? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica is in the clown room. Uh, where is Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm, look at the Naga jogging. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Maybe just more desirable than two of you. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry. I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose a club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. But boyfriend... What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Um, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Ah. Well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kinda just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You'd have heard the bell ring, at least. I must have not heard since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Uh, I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Hi, how you doing? Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Manly. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah, uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I choose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. Looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri's back to her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Always in that closet.
Yeah, here's the scene through the Natsuki route. It's not long before Natsuki comes up to me expectantly. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry, I kept my promise. I pull the first family of parfait girls out from my bag. Natsuki takes it from my hands and quickly turns it over, presumably to check for wrinkles. Hey, I'm not that careless. I handle mango all the time, you know. I just wanted to make sure. Can you blame me for being paranoid? I don't give people my manga every day, you know. That's true. I don't blame you. Well, anyway, let me put this one back. And I get the next one, okay? Natsuki makes her way to the closet. I follow. So you're gonna tell me everything you thought, right? Where did this family leave off again? I forget. Uh, the chapter ended with Minori and Alice found... Monica! Natsuki's voice resonates out from inside the closet. Eh? Huh? I peer inside. All Natsuki's books are lined up on the top shelf. Did you move my manga again? Ah, oh, sorry, sorry. The teacher got mad at me for taking up so much space in her closet. So I had to move some stuff around, clean up a little bit. And just had to take out the trash. It's all still there. I just had to organize it a bit. Ugh. The top shelf is far above Natsuki's head. Now you did that on purpose. She makes a futile hop trying to figure out how to reach her manga. Jeez. This is so inconvenient. I'm moving these all back down. There's plenty of room on these shelves. And besides, they're really pretty to look at when they're all lined up. Why would you waste all that on the top shelf? Uh, Natsuki. There's a stool on the wall there. In the closet, there's a collapsible stool that's hanging on the wall. If you want, I can reach up there and hand them to you. I can get them myself. Natsuki grabs a stool from the wall and unfolds it. You're gonna fall and the manga's gonna fall on you and it's gonna be like embarrassing anime style. So what's this gonna happen? And then you're gonna be like, I didn't mean to fall or anything, Yabaka. You think I'm too short or something? I mean... I knew it. Well, you know what? Just watch me. Natsuki hops onto the stool, which ends up being a little wobbly because of its collapsible design. Uh... Careful. I know what I'm doing. Staying on the stool, Natsuki's fingertips, re fingertips reach the top shelf. The stool would be enough for me to easily grab the books, but Natsuki's being stubborn as usual. Uh... Natsuki uses her fingers to scoot one of the smaller boxes to the edge of the shelf. See? Kia! The box suddenly tips. Natsuki barely catches it before it falls to the floor. The stool wobbles. Whoa, 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 whoa. Losing balance, Natsuki hops off the stool. Thankfully, she was able to stay on her feet. Aww. She holds the box triumphantly. There. Having almost failed, Natsuki is a bit shaken up. Jeez. No need to prove yourself to me. There's no way you'll be able to get the bigger boxes like that. I can reach them, so just... I said I can do it. Round two. I don't want your help, okay? <sighs> I'm gonna get a chair, so just hang on. Natsuki forces her way past me out of the closet. Let's see. The classroom chairs have desks attached, so they're too inconvenient to fit into the closet. Aha! Uh -huh. I hate those type of chairs. Natsuki trots over to the teacher's desk, which has a computer chair behind it. She rolls on its wheels back over to the closet. Ah. It's a little dangerous since the chair swivels and rolls. But I've already learned my lesson, so I keep my mouth shut. Whoosh! Natsuki climbs onto the chair and slowly balances onto her feet. Since she refuses my help, I take a seat with my back against the side of the doorway and simply watch. There we go, come on. Uh, there we go. See? I can easily do it now. Natsuki grabs a stack of manga and bends down to put it onto the shelf below. Whoa, whoa, whoa! The chair swivels. Natsuki catches herself on the shelf. What are you doing? Can you at least hold the chair steady instead of seeing doing nothing? But you want no help. So why you don't be like a typical anime girl, huh? Maybe you communicate like a normal person, huh? Who was it who told me not to help? Yeah, yeah, I got you. I hold the chair while Natsuki reaches back up. I can... I can almost see up her... skirt. Gah! I force myself to turn away. Natsuki seriously didn't think this through. Once she realizes, I'll be dead. Huh! Natsuki wraps her arms around the parfait girl's box set. Easily the largest one on the shelf. Uh, heavy. Hey, manly. I don't think I can bend down without falling. Hurry, take this one. Huh? 
but then I had to let go of the chair. That's fine. Just for a second. Hurry up. Alright. Let me just stand up. I slowly release my grip from the chair. What do you mean, stand up? Natsuki looks down at me. Why are you all the way back? Eh? Natsuki looks like she just realized something, but she'll lose her balance if she moves. Stay right there. Natsuki, the box. What are you looking at? I'm just gonna let that box fall. Fine. You're trying to look at my... my, 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 my. Natsuki's legs shake. I I'm not. I was just... Helping. Natsuki, don't try to move. Just give me the box. You... You hentai! You... You set me up. Go away! Okay, fine. I'm out of here. Get out! But... I'll do it myself. Ah! The chair suddenly spills beneath Natsuki's feet. Natsuki! Kia! The scene turns into chaos in a split second. The chair flies from under Natsuki's feet. Frantically, I try to catch her. The box topples out of her hands and the books go flying. Princess, catch. I got you. Crash! Bandicoot. The full force of Natsuki's body against me froze... Against me froze me to the ground. A whole bunch of books pelt me in the face. Natsuki tries to shield herself with her own arms as her face lands straight on my chest. <sighs> My right arm and my back seriously felt the impact. It's alright. My chest is designed for this. Uh Slowly Natsuki comes to her senses. She presses her arms straight into me to prop herself up. Eh? <laughs> Natsuki seems to realize that's not the floor that's beneath her. Hi, how you doing? That's alright, I'm a floor sometimes. Gross, gross! Gah! A fist pounced into my chest. Natsuki then hoists herself to her feet. What were you thinking? You sicko. Everything okay over there? I heard a loud noise. Monica suddenly peers in. M Monica! See what happens when you put the manga on the top shelf? Anime antics happen, that's what. Not because I want it. Think I'm a pervert? No, I just want to live my normal life. Read some manga, watch some anime. These people, like, create situations. Are you trying to kill your club members or something? Jeez. Sorry, sorry. Maybe she is. Oh, and one more thing. It seems like your most recent club member is a total pervert. So I hope you're happy. But she is. I didn't. Somehow, it's impossible for me to explain this whole bizarre situation to Monica. I didn't do anything, I swear. I know, I know, don't worry. Monica says, says that quietly to me. Looks like I'm off the hook. Oh no! My, my, my! Eh? I look down. Natsuki's kneeling on the floor holding one of the books that are scattered all over. There's a large diagonal crease, oh no! Along the page that she's desperately trying to smooth out. I know that feel. I'm feeling it right now. Oof. It'll never be the same. Ah, it must have landed on the page. Natsuki tries a bit more to fix the crease, but she can't get it out. See what happens when you get pride to your head? Suddenly she gives up and slams the book shut, and then throws it to the floor. That just makes it worse. Instead of continuing to yell, she just lowers her head. Natsuki, are you... No. Natsuki's voice squeaks. Whip! I see tears on her face. Uh, I'll help you get the crease out, okay? It's partially my fault, so... Natsuki shakes her head, still looking down. No. I don't even care that much. I'm just... having a really bad day today. Natsuki sobs again. I didn't mean to take it out on you. Good. I really didn't mean to. It's... it's fine. Is there anything you want to talk about? Natsuki shakes her head. Just... every day... Is so hard. Yeah, you might drop your manga. I just want to come to the club and... Natsuki falls silent again. I can't press her, so I can only do what I know how to do. Alright. Well, I'll help clean this up. And I'll move the rest of your manga for you. Um, I pick up volume 2 of Parfait Girls. We'll set this one aside. This will help cheer you on up a bit, right? 
We can get started on once I'm done here. Natsuki looks up with her glossy eyes. Her lip quivers. You're... You're really nice to me. Eh? That sounds really strange coming from Natsuki. I didn't expect it at all. I must be melting her sudden heart. Well, I'm just treating you like a friend, you know? Yo, that's not what she wanted to hear. Natsuki lowers her head and staffles another sob. I'm not sure what happened to her today, but being nice is the least I can do. The next couple of minutes are silent between us as I begin gathering the scattered books. I make sure I slip them into the box in their correct order. After, all, after a little bit, Natsuki starts helping. It isn't long before we're done, and I hoist the box into the shelf where Natsuki wanted to put it. Then I get on the stool and quickly finish moving the rest of her books from the top shelf. Alright. That should do it. I hop off the stool. Natsuki averts her gaze. Thanks. <laughs> it's nothing. Natsuki's holding the value I set aside in her hands. Alright, I'm ready. Good. Even if you weren't, I'd make you anyway. You're taking responsibility for what you said. No? See you later. I'm out of this club. The thing about cheering me up. If you insist. We sit in the same spot as last time as I open up the second volume. Natsuki's mood quickly improves, laughing and pointing things out to me. She's surprisingly sharp, making note of a lot of subtle, repeated jokes and background elements. In the end, I'm pretty impressed by how everything ties together in this manga. I guess Natsuki has good taste after all. Nah, it's still bad. After some time, Monica gets our attention as usual, and it's time to share poems again. I guess I'll be holding on to this for now. Yep. Even you sound more enthusiastic this time. Well, I'm starting to get into it, you know. Told you. Yeah, yeah. I returned to my seat and slipped the book into my bag. Manly, Manly. Hi, Manly Des. Sayori suddenly comes up to me. I'm gonna get some supplies from another classroom. Wanna come with me? No. Supplies? What for? Well, you know how the festival's coming up? Me and Monica, we're gonna make some posters and stuff. So you need to go find some crayons and markers and glue sticks. Ah, I see. Sure, I'll go with you. Dang it, Manly. Okay, Monica. We'll be back soon. Uh, are you going with Manly to get supplies? There's no need to trouble yourself. I'd be happy to go with him. Aha, uh -huh, but I want to go. It's so much fun exploring empty classrooms and stuff. Okay, okay. It was just a suggestion. See, you can find a poster paper too, okay? Save me! I don't want to go with her. Okay. Ready, Manly? No. Yep, let's go. Sayori and I exit the club room. I follow behind as Sayori humps and skips around the hallway. Honestly, it feels like I'm taking a kid to the mall or something. Sayori finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. Hey, Sayori. What exactly are we doing for the festival anyway? I'm not sure how you would make an event out of literature. Me and Monica have it all planned out. Don't you worry. I'm gonna worry. Is that so? So on the car. Yep. We're gonna be doing a poetry performance. A performance? Of what kind? Well, everyone is gonna take turns on stage and recite their favorite poems. Ah, that sounds kind of dull. Manly! You're not thinking about the right way at all. It's not just about reading poems. It's about performing them. I can say the lines of the poem like, Between my feet, a last remaining flower beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots, caressing the final joyous moments between my fingers. But to what ends have I summoned this joy? For well, now, when I look in every direction, the once prosperous field before me is but a barren wasteland. Like that. Sayori. How do I put this? I'm sure it's just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Eh. Uh, you meanie. Stop being so anime. I'm working super hard on this, you know. Uh, I know, I know. I just meant it's a pretty unordinary contrast to your cute self. <laughs> Don't say that, it's embarrassing. But I guess that means I'm doing a good job. Yeah, I guess so. I'm so excited. The festival is going to be so much fun. 
Sayori spins herself around in the hallway again. Hey, Manly, this classroom over here is empty. Let's begin the mission. The mission, eh? It's been a long time since I've spent time with Sayori like this. But in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. She's nothing but a ball of sunshine, drawing happy vibes from the world around her. It's a pretty nostalgic feeling for me. As the years went by, I began to hold myself up in my room more and more. So going adventuring with Sayori brings about a special sort of feeling I forgot I had in me. The two of us enter the classroom. Sayori heads straight to the closet and I follow. Let's see what we have in here. Crayons! Sayori pulls a box full of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand, too. They're kind of dirty, though. Sayori starts pulling various crayons out of the box and reading the color names. Alright, that's one down. Don't get distracted, we still need to find... Wait, I'm looking for my favorite color. Fine, fine. Now at least move aside so I can look for the poster paper. Ah, uh, I dropped one by accident. Smack! Kia! Sayori bends over and smacks her forehead right into the shelf. She falls to the floor and the crayons spill all over her lap. Ow, 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 ow. You okay? My forehead. Sayori clutches her forehead. Gee, Sayori. That's just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. So Sayori is sitting on the floor. I grab her by the waist and pull her out of the closet. You have to move your hands, Sayori. But it hurts. Just do it for a second. It's kind of a... It's kind of an interesting posture. If you get my drift. If you're following. Sayori slowly raises her hands from her forehead. I gently brush her bangs to the side. Ow. Sorry. There's a huge red mark in the center of her forehead. A bump is starting to form as well. Man, that's gonna swell up. I should find you some ice. Manly. Where would I even find ice around this time? Uh, I guess a cold drink would do. You don't have to. I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. Okay then, see you later. Even wincing from the pain, Sayori makes a silly joke. What are you saying? I'll be right back, okay? Okay. I pat Sayori on the shoulder and run out into the hallway. I locate the nearest vending machine. What should I get? It doesn't really matter, it's still be used as an ice pack rather than a drink. But I know Sayori likes apple juice, so I purchased that one. Wow. In just a moment, I'm already returning to the classroom I left Sayori. Are you been sitting like that since the entire time? She has one palm on her forehead and is using the other hand to clumsily scoop crayons back into the box. At least they were already in the wrong spots before I spilled them. Sayori here. I had Sayori the ball of apple juice, which she just drinks in the end. It's nice and cold. Sayori opens a cap and starts drinking from it. Sayori, what are you doing? I told you! I know this. I'm in their head. It's for your forehead, idiot. Ah. Uh, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> How hard did you hit your head? Sayori places the ball against a bump on her head. It stings. Just bear with it. It will feel better soon. Looks like it cleaned up most of the crayons, so that's good. Hey, Manly. This kind of reminds you of growing up, doesn't it? We don't talk about those days. Eh, what do you mean? You know how we used to play outside all the time? I would always try to keep up with you. You were kind of oblivious in some ways. Like I usually fell behind or had trouble climbing on the things you did. But sometimes when I tried to do things I couldn't, I would get myself hurt. I'd fall and scrape myself or get a bump. And I would start crying really hard. <laughs> and you would rush over as quick as you could. You would try really hard to get me to stop crying. It was almost like you blamed yourself and were afraid of getting in trouble if someone found out. Even though it really wasn't your fault at all, you know. Did I really do that? Yeah, you don't remember? Come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. I guess I was always so focused on my games I didn't pay enough attention to you. So in a way, it was my fault. Kind of like this time, too. If I wasn't rushing you out of the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. Don't say that, Manly. It's not your fault. Manly, I don't think you realize it, but you're always thinking about other people. <laughs> Even after all these years, you're rushing to help me even though I'm just being clumsy. You're really a sweetheart. I'm being railroaded to do this. Don't call me that. 
And I don't really do this kind of thing all the time. I guess when it comes to you, it just feels natural. Before I even know it, I'm treating you like that. Like I said, what happens when you've been friends for so long? Yes, drop that word. Really? Maybe you're right. Manly. I'm so glad that nothing's changed between us. Do you think it'll be like this forever? No. Forever? If I'm honest to myself, there's no telling where we'll each end up for college or after that. So it wouldn't be fair for me to make any promises. But... Well, I hope so. Cross my fingers. It's been like this long already, right? I can't imagine you ever changing, so my hopes are up. I'm so happy. Sayori has a whimsical expression in her eyes. We remain silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside that when I see her deep in thought like this, it makes me not want to disturb her. I guess we should go back. I don't want to worry Monica, you know? Good luck with that. She's gonna see your forehead either way. Now I hide under my bangs. Sayori hops to her feet. Ah. She clutches her forehead again. Don't stamp so fast after hurting yourself. Well, I guess it's too late now. Anyway, let's go. I follow Sayori out of the classroom. Sayori plays with her bangs to try to hide the bomb, but without much success. Yeah, it ain't happening. In a moment, we make it back to the club room. Ah, you're back. Good timing. I was just about to really start with sharing our poems. Sayori screwed up. Sayori, your forehead. She's fine. Don't worry about it. One night night. I was playing with the crayons to smack my forehead into the shelf. Well, anyway. Were you able to find everything we needed? Uh-huh. I have it right. Huh? So your friendically glances around herself. I forgot all the stuff. <sighs> Calm down, Sayori. I have it all right here. I found the poster paper, too. <laughs> Sounds like you end up doing all the work, Manly. I always do. Ah, uh, well, Sayori... I guess it was comic relief. I failed to come up with an excuse for Sayori. I made an adventure. Yeah, that. <laughs> okay, okay. In any case, good work. I'll start working on the posters tonight. Me too. Okay, everyone. Are you ready to share your poems? Guess I should grab mine. To make sure the crayon box is closed tightly, I return to my seat. So now we'll show off the Yuri version of events. Hey, Yuri. Eh? Ah. I suddenly noticed that Yuri is reading a different book from the one we've been reading together. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Ah, no. I was kind of just waiting for you. Uh, if that's the case, why don't we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Drink tea. A dimension for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small pitch water pitcher from the shelf. The kind of a filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm gonna plug this in at the teacher's desk, and then we'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets a kettle down on the teacher's desk. I suddenly watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. Uh, I might as well walk with you. Yeah, uh, why not? Shall we go then? Yeah. Hmm? Where are you two off to? Oh, just being lovebirds. Eh? We're just... Yuri was gonna make some tea, so... I suddenly realize how weird it sounds like putting this to Monica. We're just filling the water pitcher. Ah, okay. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. That's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? That's... You're a little nosy, aren't you? Monica, please mind your own business for once. Whoa, hoo, hoo, hoo. When you want me to tell me there's something wrong with helping involve manly club activities. Eh? My mouth gapes. I... I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. Hmm. Then let's go, Manly. Ah. Uh, Yuri quickly exits the room and I follow. 
Once in the hallway, man, you are already getting ready. She suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. I spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Yuri. I just... Something about the way she said that. It made me feel so... Irritated. What's wrong with me? No, Yuri. I think... You did the right thing. And I would say that because this is supposed to be your route. I wasn't expecting it, but... It's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. Manly. How come even when I do something bad, you are being nice to me? Because... Nothing that you do is bad as you make it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. Except me. But nobody's me. Except me. So don't try to be me. Except me. We have emotions, and we can't always hide them away. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. Uh, no, no, no. Wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. What kind of friend would do that? A friend, you say. Um... Yuri lifts her head. Manly, I really like being friends with you. <laughs> Thanks, Yuri. I like being friends with you, too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that. But I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Shall we go? Yeah. Yuri and I walked to the nearest water fountain. Once we filled the water pitcher, we returned to the classroom. Where is the CG? Are you gonna spill the water on yourself? Are we gonna get that? No, maybe a little too fan servicey for this. Manly, do you like oolong tea? I actually do, kinda. Oh yeah. Anything is fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature in the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything. <laughs> in that case, you'll only be even more impressed. Uh, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show. And you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking. And I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. And turns out it's not very hard for me to do. When it's you who's around anyway. Ah. That's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Manly. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I want Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Manly, I have another request. I'm not gonna marry you. Do you mind we sit on the floor today? Eh, uh, why's that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly. So I do my best to manage it. Is that so? Are you implying something? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because of my... Uh... My, 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 my... Your... Posture, right? And not your opi or anything? No one said that. Except me. I always hunched over like that while reading. And yes! I have trouble reading posture. So that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieved the book from my bag. That's a nice bag. Ah, oh, I have some chocolate as well. Woo wee, manly. We're moving fast. It's a bag of small chocolate candies I kept hidden from Sayori's candy radar. I take it since they'll go down well with the tea. You and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Yuri sides closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but... When she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Eh, yeah, well, fine. Just to worry about. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally managed to relax a little. Maybe we can take a nap. Maybe like the little sunlight caressing in. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Ah, oh, sorry. 
I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, uh, that's... That's okay. I won't take any. Uh, are you sure? Well, if I touch it, they might get smudges on the pages. Oh, you're right. And you're actually right, yeah. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. That was a fairly simple CG. A little forlorn, actually. Yuri opens a book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any harder of a time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri's already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. Then I take another chocolate. And I hold it up to Yuri. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Let's do this, come on. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if the situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. That's a really small chocolate. Eh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did... Did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Uh, um... Manly. So sorry. Not. I guess I shouldn't have done that. Uh, that's... Well... You were just helping. That's something that friends do. Right? I mean... Not really in this kind of context, but... Yeah. Sure. That's all it was. Yeah. Then... You don't need to stop or anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Everyone's being forward tonight. Uh, I see. The situation's gotten really tense. Incoming Monica in a second. Yuri tries to return to the book. But I can't tell just by her expression that she, even she can't focus now. My Kokoro is doki doking. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers. But this time Yuri's eyes meet mine. How did he even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling to the rhythm of the breaths. I raise my arm. Uh, like before Yuri parts her lips. But it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath on my fingers. Yeah, here we go. Incoming Monica. Monica. Okay, everyone. Ooh, uh... Ah! Yuri jolts back. It's time to share poems. Manly, you can help Yuri put away the tea stuff, right? Yeah, uh, of course. Okay, thanks. The spell's abruptly broken. I'll... I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. You pick up the teacups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up about so much as a word between us. I get the feeling this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. And boy, it's poem day. So same thing, we'll do Natsuki, and then we'll do Monica. And the other ones will show off just the positive version of their dialogue. Natsuki reads my poem. She keeps glancing at me, then back at the poem. By now, she must have read it more than once. Is it that bad? No, no, it's not. It's good. It's really good, okay? There, I said it. Good. Get over your conundrums. Uh, this wasn't supposed to happen at all. Why could you just be bad at this? My poems are supposed to impress you, not the other way around. I'm just that cool. You're trying to impress me. Obviously, you think I'd let you enjoy Yuri's writing more than mine? Wow, you guys... Like Kitsune and Tanuki here. Give me a break. Well... In that case, what's the problem with me trying to impress you? I'll tell you. You... Natsuki's face freezes like she just realized something. Yeah, come on. Come on. Just let it out. Just release those feelings. Just take off the burden. You... 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 You're trying to... impress me? Natsuki vigorously scans her eyes over my poem one more time. Then the poem slips out of her hands and flutters to the floor. I, I have to use the bathroom. Of course you do. Red-faced Natsuki quickly walks out of the room. Hey, Manly. Did you use me in Natsuki? Just laid on the moves. I just saw her rush out like that. You didn't do anything terrible, did you? 
No, no. I just told her that. My voice gets caught in my throat. There's no way I could tell Monica that I'm trying to impress Natsuki. Hmm? Monica sees a poem lying on the floor and swiftly picks it up. She reads through it, her smile not fading from her face. I see. You wrote this for Natsuki, didn't you? Uh, I mean, I just threw some words to the but yeah. Not really. In fact, didn't she like your poem a lot the other day, too? I'm surprised you know her taste so well already. Are you sure not cheating, Manly? <laughs> yes, I am. Well, let's not discuss that. Cheating? What do you mean by that? Never mind. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I didn't understand Monica's joke at all. Anyway. How do you think Natsuki feels about you? Oh, you don't need to answer that. It was just something for you to think about. Hey! Natsuki comes up and snatches the poem out of Monica's hands. Navros had noticed her re-enter the classroom. Did you read this, Monica? Of course. I liked it. Uh, you should really stop reading things that aren't for you, you know. You have a bad habit of doing that. Uh-huh. But Manly wrote this poem. And we're supposed to share with everyone, right? Uh, Natsuki freezes. Come on, just get over it. Just relax. Let let the stress flow. She apparently forgot that my poem was technically for everyone to read. Okay, well, I think Manly's done sharing this poem with everyone. It's not like anyone would want to read this anyway. But I'm just gonna hold on to this. Put it in my shrine, along with my hair. If you insist. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Like what? Uh, never mind. Um, Natsuki. I'll give you the poem, that's still not very fair to Sayori. She hasn't gotten to read it yet. So what? Well, I guess Manly is right, Natsuki. It's not fair if you don't let everyone finish reading it. Fine. Natsuki returns my poem. It's not like she's going to like it, though. That's true, based on the mechanics. Anyway, read my poem now. And no, I won't let you keep it. This is my only copy. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. But her friends start to like spiders too. That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other homies. It doesn't matter if she keeps a private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. Well, I guess what that symbolism is. It's a multi-layer symbolism that can be taken for her love for manga, personally, for her specifically, or for everyone else. It could be their love of a certain hobby, or just something they keep hidden about themselves. Yep. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. It'll never be as good as mine, though. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem, I noticed. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain the complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. You know people like that. Of course. It's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It could be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid of people find out they make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and makes them happy? I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. You know. I'm glad that you can appreciate this kind of writing. Sure. I mean, I know I was talking about that yesterday, but I've been 
Well, I've been enjoying sharing my writing with you, so... So consider yourself lucky, okay? <laughs> well, thanks for being honest. What's that supposed to mean? I'm always honest. <laughs> oh, oh. Jeez. Just look forward to tomorrow too, okay? Alright, I will. Huh. Monica's options gone. I guess because you already indirectly saw it. Interesting. So I might choose her first, out of curiosity. Hi again, Manly. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to show what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Alright. It's pretty good. You've been spending some time with Natsuki, haven't you? You must like her writing style. Oh, uh, yeah. I think it's a neat way to tell a story. Mm-hmm. I don't disagree. Natsuki's poems may be cute, but they're also meaningful. I could see why you'd be into that style. I guess that means you're not as much a fan of Yuri's poems, then. Uh, I wouldn't say that. I kinda like everyone's poems. That's true, but I'm sure you like some more than others, right? You make using the poems as symbolism for which girl I'm going with? Like Yuri's use of complex words and symbolism. Or Sayori's way of expressing happiness or sadness in a more direct way. You must have some kind of preference, don't you? It's not that it's a contest or anything. I was just curious, that's all. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless... Cosephony of meaningless noise. Noise that won't stop. Violent, grinning waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sudden, cousin tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Save me and load me. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just kind of a thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Using where and how the space or words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. That is true, it did change a little bit there. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling. Or a conversation with the reader. So putting it in that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway. Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When it happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. That was... curious. Manly. I really love your poems. I can't believe you've been hiding these from me. Eh, I'm not hiding anything. Just my talent just exudes naturally. But your poems are so good. Yesterday's in this one too. You can't tell me you haven't done this before. I mean, you're really the only one who feels that way, so... Eh? No way. Not even Natsuki? Oh hell no, she doesn't like these. Well, I guess Natsuki's at least likely to admit how much you like something. I don't think it's that. What do you mean? Well, I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Damn, Manly. Eh? Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop thinking weird things, idiot. I just mean that you're a really expressive person, I guess. 
How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? All I do is just play video games and commentate on them. But you somehow make everything in life an adventure. But even the little things. Like cooking. Let's not talk about that. So yeah. I guess what I'm saying is that I can feel more feelings for you than I can have for myself. We have that kind of weird connection. It's your fault for getting my business all the time. Eh? I don't know if I understand. Uh, you never understand when I'm trying to explain things to you, do you, Sayori? I pat Sayori's head. <laughs> hey! I'm not kidding, you know. Are you sure about that? Uh, maybe. Sayori starts filling with her pencil between her hands. Hey, Manly. Will you give me your poem? I kind of want to keep it. Oh, uh, why? Because, well, it's the first time you've written something for me. <laughs> Sayori, you completely misunderstood. In very many levels. I didn't write this for you. <sighs> Are you even listening anymore? Oh, whatever. I'll give it to you when we go home. Really? Snap! Uh, I broke my pencil. Great job. Sayori hastily bends down to pick up the pieces she dropped. But being an intent of her surroundings, she bumps right into me. Tang, Sorry. It's fine. No, it's not. It's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down to pick up the broken pencil. Sayori clutches the desk behind her to support herself, knees shaking. I'm a little clumsy today. Let's sit down, Sayori. You're always clumsy. Yeah. I grab Sayori's arm and help her set the desk. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Oh! Sorry, I forgot about that. But it's not as good as yours. Jeez, don't worry. I'm sure I'll like it. Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's a secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of cannons. I reach inside my thumb and the forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. There's no time to waste. I put in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the ball on the shelf and all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and balls all in a row. My collection makes me a lot of friends. Each ball is starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering secrets hiding in nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my ball caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look for my front locked front door. Falling all alone, I open up and in come my friends. And they come in such a hurry. They want my balls that much. I finally pull them down from the shelf one after the other. Pulling them out to each and every friend. Each and every bottle. And every time I let one go, it shares against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends. My friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Oh boy. Holy crap. Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but this was heavy. I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Oh, uh, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You got pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah. Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. So you always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. What well, if this is one of those times? But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Let's see what you written for today. Yuri starts the poem with a surprised expression on her face. When she sees your poem skills. Do you like it? Manly, this one might be even better than yesterday's. I didn't even pick this up on this so quickly. Just yesterday, I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try giving it more imagery. 
Your invisibility swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine. Take your time. Not everyone can handle all this. That is me. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah. Just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid. But seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. Even your close friends? Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. Anyway. Do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah. I do. If it's with you. Ooh. The raccoon. Tanuki. It happened in the dead of the night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scattering of a raccoon outside my window. Scuttering, actually. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as a... ordinary human. Or unordinary? I gave the raccoon a piece of bread. My subconscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that's fit will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was a symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity. The raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its face, reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken the following me. You can say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brush my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me his excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread. And I feed myself again. Am I the raccoon? Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit close to my preferred writing style. Using the poems as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, but I take it at face value and I can't figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I want to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? B because they're embarrassing. And people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Manly? Are you a fan fiction writer? Are you writing fan fiction above me? There was something else that implied it in the game. Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other in our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes, some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I'd probably hate myself. I might be running a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. You're good at a lot of things. Writing, listening... There really aren't many people like you, Manly. That's exaggerating a little bit. It's just how I feel. I never thought I would feel so comfortable sharing my writing. But now I almost feel like I look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling. And you're to thank for that. It's... it's nothing, really. Yuri smiles sincerely at me. For just a moment, her timidness seems to disappear. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone can come sit at the front of the room... Is it about the festival? Well, sort of. Uh, you really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I only would do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets that we can give out during the event. Okay, that's green and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Oh, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. 
We're going to be performing. Performing? Are we turning to K-On? Uh, Monica. Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. So you're always putting in all, all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. So you've already been coloring a poster holds up for us to see. It's gonna be awful. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't- You didn't always start putting those posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's, a, it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm gonna be performing in front of a group of people like that. I agree with Natsuki. I could never, in my life, do something like that. Imagine it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys. No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri had never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room of full people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So I'm sorry. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, and will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone that what literature is all about. Yeah. Really more of a poetry club than anything. It's about expressing your feelings. Being intimate with yourself. Finding new horizons. And having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of a room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Come on, everybody. What can go wrong? Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. Guess that leaves me no choice. It can't be helped. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright! Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. I guess I don't really have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No, 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 no way! Monica! This is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of the strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? Uh, of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Uh -huh. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply motion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes a recit recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica. Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? I'll, I'll go next. Well, Yori's fired up all of a sudden. Yori clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yori anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's, it's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. That sounds like some kind of anime character, like a... like a Dante type of figure. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. 
Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. A poem with full twists and turns and structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. And at first I start applauding. Woo! America! Everyone joins me afterward. And they give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her. But we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds a poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri's down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. So Yuri hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah, ah, <laughs> sorry, I giggled. Stop giggling, Sayori. It's not cute, it's annoying. Sayori, it's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror, or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice is mean as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. The hearing come out from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it. Good job, Sayori. It was okay, to be honest. <laughs> Even Manly liked it. No, I didn't. I was just being nice. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. And I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. You might need a little more force behind them depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. The movie go before Manly. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Manly lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Oh, joke's on you. I'm not an expert. Natsuki. It's fine, it's fine. Daijo moves. One night night. I might as well get over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. So I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. Woo, Natsuki! The poem is called. It's called. Uh, why are you all looking at me? Because that's what we're supposed to do. You awkward chipmunk. Because you're presenting. Huh. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Shonen Jump. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little infused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She hops back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Well, do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? 
I mean, doing it for other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. That's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what to like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time so what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. Really? I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Oh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival's coming up, but let's try to write up poems for tomorrow's as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish playing tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's a big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. Alright. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club, and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you, always going home together like that. Are you jealous? It's kind of adorable, isn't it? Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, no, it's terrible. I wish I could just walk home alone. How am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Manly, you don't have to say it. Say that that sucks. Whatever, let's go already. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Uh, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... Uh, I mean... Sayori fumbles with her words. So, let's just say that one day Natsuki asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You think I'm going to replace you because I am? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> I better make a save point as recommended by the game. Let's deliver it hard. Let's deliver it hard. Walking home with Natsuki, huh? Why does the father that make my heart pound? Doki Doki this. I mean, I think I'd be afraid of what she'd do to me if I turned her down. Isn't she so cute and fun to be around? That has nothing to do with what I just said. <laughs> you admitted it. Jeez. There's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know? Good. Need you. Sayori. I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry. Everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Yet. If you say so. The conversation chills off and I'm left feeling awkward. It was kind of her fault for trapping me with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her. But if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there was no point in speculating. Then again, that festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. I would still walk home with Sayori. Sayori. You really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Yes, I would. Huh? But, but, but... She's so beautiful and smart. Jeez. I already see her in a club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. Of her manly would. You're so silly, manly. You think about me too much sometimes. Yuri would deserve it if she wanted it, so... Sayori, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point in speculating about something that's never going to happen? Hmm. The conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Sayori to care so much about. I want to respect her and keep her happy, too. And again, the festival's only a few days away. Who knows what will happen at that time? A lot of stuff. I would walk home with Yuri. Walking home with Yuri, huh? Why does the father make my heart pound? Doki Doki. I mean, given how hard it is for her to socialize, I would feel awful turning her down, so... Is that all it is, manly? I mean, me? Isn't she so beautiful and smart? That's nothing to do with what I just said. <laughs> you admitted it. Jeez. 
There's not even a point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know? Need you? Sayori? I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry. Everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Except everyone else. Hmm. If you say so. The conversation trills off and I'm left feeling awkward. It was kind of her fault for trapping with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her. But if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. But again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. <laughs>